Hey everybody, this is Way to Fail back with more Starbound, where you can see I'm wearing some cool shades to go with my cool jacket now. And I've done a little bit of farming, like I said I would off camera, and I, while I do have a crap ton of iron, my current limiting factor for my gear is pixels. Pixels, pixels, and more pixels. I just need a lot of them. Actually, in order to build what I want to build here, I need 200, 600, 1600. And while I could farm that, that's going to take a lot of time. And I have managed to uh, get some other gear, so I think I may be ready to move on because I'm starting to slice through things pretty well. I did make the copper set. That didn't take too long to get the stuff for, but I'm still wearing some cosmetic items as well. I also made two fantastic weapons, the uh, Smacker and the Iron Hunting Bow, and I'll show you a little bit of just how super effective those weapons are. Now granted, I was hemming and hawing a little bit first about whether the uh, increase in damage was going to justify what was going on, but just here's the Smacker. You remember it took me a few hits to kill this level 1 enemy, not enemy, but passive alien before, now 100 damage, max damage, just like that. That's the iron hammer weapon very worthwhile and then the bow if I could actually get him to stay still and hit him that wasn't even a full power shot 100 and more alien meat which is nice because getting hungry sucks so I have some pretty powerful gear here I did try and make something resembling a farm here but I'm not sure how effective it's gonna be but in the end I think and I picked up some glass blocks so I should probably store those as well but yeah, what's our goal today? Our goal, very simply, is to place the Distress Beacon and see what happens. So, with those little pleasantries, just to let you know that I did off-camera, I have no idea what's going to happen when I place it. I have a feeling it's going to trigger something bad, considering the tooltip is who knows what it might be, who, might be who hears it. I had a quest for it that said pretty much, you might want to gear up before you place it. So let's, you know what, screw it, this is... A game and if I die whatever I have 71 pixels I have a ton of gear I've been able to obliterate anything that comes my way now so let's place the distress beacon right here there we go right near my starting location nothing could possibly go wrong by me activating it no signal please activate on planet surface I am on the planet surface okay well let's try this again because as I've said a zillion times this is beta and beta means that sometimes there will be bugs. Bugs such as not being able to activate the distress beacon. So let's try that again. Let's get rid of this grape seed. Not get rid of it, but just move it. My grapes are not very happy growing here. Let's place them in the middle of my farm. There we go. Now we are getting uh, something going here. And let's see how good this is going to end up. So let's activate it. And oh boy. That is a... Uh, floaty thing that is okay you're shooting some bad people at me and they're level 10 penguins well, that's no good okay and they're shooting rockets at me so I should probably first off I should probably see if I can do some damage with the arrows here yeah I can okay, so that is that is a spaceship that just crushed the shit out of me okay well I'm dead, Jim. And what do we got? If I'm looking at this right, that was my first encounter, and we still have some baddies that are summoned. But unfortunately, I think the distress beacon is kaput and gone. Yes, it is, so I'm going to have to prepare for that. As he's friendly firing himself to death. That's funny. Okay, so I don't know if there is a spaceship floating around right now. Or what's going on but if I'm gonna have to farm a little bit more it's gonna be a little bit sad because quite frankly I can kill everything else those are that's level 10 stuff right there so maybe you know I've actually kind of really run out of copper resources on this planet I don't know I have like four copper and it's been a struggle to find copper because it's mostly a surface thing so that was my first encounter with the spaceship and I got owned Let's see if it's actually still over here, because I'm going to have to figure out kind of what I'm doing. Obviously, it drops ads, and I maybe need to build an arena for it Terraria style. Because, yeah, if it's going to crush me like that and get in a pit here, I'm going to be a goner. So, yeah, it despawned. So, I'm going to have to find some copper somewhere. And I think the best way to do that is to actually go to, not greener pastures, but go to a different planet and see what I can find. 
That sounds reasonable. I think I can handle a higher threat level. Certainly a level 10 bunch of enemies is going to be a lot to deal with with my current gear. Because right now I'm fighting level 4, level 5. So I think I do need to up this just a little bit. So, you know what? This planet whose name I cannot exactly remember or know how to pronounce has been good to me. And I'm going to leave a little bit of stuff here for base camp, I think. But it's probably time to see if I can pack up and set up a base somewhere else because I have gotten pretty much all I can out of this planet at least at this point. Like I said I do, did do some exploring I started to find a little bit further in the subterranean realm some useful stuff but unfortunately for me eh, I couldn't mine into it not even with my copper pickaxe maybe I need to upgrade a little bit more but yeah my inventory is getting a little full so I didn't need to do inventory management and the farm by the way I was doing it wrong thank you to uh, people on reddit who informed me of this you hit E and you get to harvest wheat, wheat, wheat. Still not entirely sure what to do with the wheat. Probably along the lines of uh, making bread, but I'm just not sure what the recipe is. Sugar and sugar and sugar. And are you all growing? Bolt bub. See, so yeah, let's go ahead and plant some stuff here. I'm not sure still what some of these do. Is. My grapes are still not very happy. But yeah, we're going to plant some more seeds here and we're going to actually leave the planet. That's right, The uh, it's not my home, but it's the only planet I've known in Starbound so far. So it's a, kind of a big deal for me to just kind of move on to something else. And I'm, I'm going to do a little bit of a test here too. I want to see if I can actually get some stuff to grow down here without rain. I think I can. If I can do a tiered farm like this, that'd be wonderful. But so far I've had some problems getting things to grow down here, but at least if things don't want to grow in these conditions, like the grapes don't. Maybe grapes need to be under trees, that's the only place I've found them. Uh, wheat's very happy though. This wheat is reproducing like a crazy... oh, I just ate. I just ate something and I don't... I didn't even mean to, so sugarcane seed, let's try that again. And the uh, bolt up, yeah, I'm not, I haven't gotten too much with that, so... Yay, you got to watch me fail at a very anticlimactic fight. It's pretty much, hey, look, here he is. Smack. I got destroyed. So while I have better gear, I think I'm going to need to farm some resources before I do that again. Because I am a ways off before. I mean, these, these are level 1 creatures that I'm killing. I can actually hit it. Oh, level 2. Excuse me. So, wow. I actually just about double arrowed him. Wow. I have just forgotten how to aim. So there we go, I may need to try and do some ranged attacks there for sure, but for now... Okay, I just... Meat is falling from the sky. I don't... I don't even... I'm not even going to question this anymore. That's probably an omen for me to go back to the ship, actually. So, yay, we are a ways into this video, and I'm still shooting arrows at myself. So yeah, this is the ship. I got one treasure chest that didn't have anything particularly useful in it. I found a different color flashlight. Yippee skippy. Um, let's place a bed in here. You can actually upgrade your ship and it'll get substantially bigger but we're not quite there yet but at least I can sleep in here now I apparently have some new schematics in the 3d printer although I'm not sure what because right now all I have is a ceiling lamp at this point and I can try and scan but that costs more pixels meanwhile here we go if I want to fly somewhere else I have no fuel so I can set certain plants to home I can fly to a threat level 4 desert biome. I don't think I want to go to threat level 4. I think I want to just hit 2 or 3. So let me see if I can add some fuel. I have a decent source of fuel. It's coal ore. How much fuel does that give me? 352. Do I want to use all my coal ore? Maybe not just yet because I just remembered I do not have torches. And I can actually let's see here, I can actually reproduce some of these torches but I kind of want to let's scan a torch while we're here. But yeah, I do I do want to hold on to some coal just to make torches. I don't need to fly all the way across the galaxy. So torches, where are you? Should be able to do just one for 12. And scan. And I'm scanning and nothing's happening. So apparently, apparently that's not a thing right now. But that's okay. Apparent, I, apparently, it's. I thought it was the limitation was that things that don't cost pixels can't be scanned, but I guess it's useful items as well. So in that case, how much fuel do we get? 342. So there we go. I am now at a quarter tank. 
which is kind of like my driving existence in general. And look at this, I have plant buttons. So let's see here. I have some fuel. I don't know how far away some of this is. Let's see if we can zoom out a little bit. We can. So I am in the alpha something system and we're at alpha 5. Let's see what alpha 4 looks like. There's a threat level 4 desert planet and there's a gas giant. Alpha 3. Arid threat level 2. That one looks pretty good. And a snow threat level 1. Well, the biggest threat there will be the fact that it'll freeze my balls off, so we're not going to do that necessarily. Snow level 1, forest level 10, interesting, and desert level 10. And those are threat levels. Can I go out beyond the alpha sector? This is the alpha sector. So apparently, because the quest, the original quest is you can't leave the alpha sector until you do this. So I do, there is plenty of places that I can actually go to. And while there is a level 2, planet I think I kind of want to do a level 3 one instead and I don't know how if we can necessarily search for it but let's see your threat level 1 threat level 4 see if I can find a 3 that's not a snow that'd be fantastic threat level 3 but it's a snow right next to a red dwarf who knew so like a, so maybe I can fly to some of these 8 snow 5 air we may have to go back to the one that's just in our system right now there we go. This one has a, a lot of options here. So five, four, five, and you, too bad you can't tell some of these things from a little further out. So you are having to go over here. And apparently the game's trolling me because it wants to give me a bunch of threat level one snow planets. I didn't know there were all these ice planets out there. So nine, two. What kind of? That's a moon biome. I think moon biomes are very dangerous as well. So we get moon for level two, moon for level three. And I kind of want to stick with something like a desert level three. So maybe, maybe we'll do that. Snow, moon, moon level 10, desert level four. Yeah, I've got, I've got some decent gear. But yeah, this is kind of what the uh, travel system is just a little bit. A lot of point, uh, pointing, clicking, searching. Let's try one more and see if we can find what we want to. Desert and arid. It'd be nice if I could actually, there's another desert level two, and that's a moon. Desert level five. I really want a desert level three, and I don't think I can search for it. So let's, I know I said I'd do one more, and maybe I could do a cut here, but I think you all might enjoy going through the search progress with me. Moon level four, forest level six. I am on a, a forest moon right now, so arid level three, there we go. Now arid is not the same as desert, or is it? I don't know. But bingo, alpha sigma boo 8773, this is what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and, wow, actually, it does not take as much fuel as I thought to do here. So alpha sigma boo, I can remember that pretty easily because that's at the end of a constellation. Let's see, however, if I wanted to go really, really, really far away, how much fuel would it take? Because this is the thing that really trumps Terraria, in my opinion. Here is that is, okay, that's a bunch of planets close to each other. I thought that was something else. Is that once you're done with one world, you can go on to another one here. So if I wanted to go to, oh, wow, there's another arid level three. Interesting. That doesn't take much fuel either. So pretty cool that I just happened to find two arid level threes. And I think I'm going to go... You know what? Let's go with the one that's in the constellation. It's not that far. I really have no idea one way or the other, but this is the one I found first, if I can find it again. It's going to take a second. Arid level 3. There we go. And there's a snow level 6. There's a moon level 9 as well. There's a few places I can explore here, but let's go ahead and use a tiny bit of fuel Unless, of course, that's the amount of fuel that I have remaining, but I guess that's uh, part of the joy of discovery and finding out. So let's go. Authenticating. Apparently, you need to authenticate to fly as we go away from here. All of this navigational mumbo jumbo. I have 24 fuel left. So that was, that was shooting my fuel wad, as it were. So wherever I'm going, I better be happy there because I'm going to need to get some coal. So here we go, flying through the uh, craziness. There's all of your code flying through. The more important part is this, though. So we have our nice star warp part just flying through here. 
it's a, it's very well done. In fact, it's so well done. I think I'm gonna sleep and recover some health, and just enjoy the ride. So yeah, that's really one nice thing about Starbound is that you know what? I screwed up. I got the quest kind of wrong. But there we go. We're getting out of FTL now, which is faster than light. But I screwed up, but that doesn't mean it's the end of the game. It's not like I have to find another Eye of Cthulhu. It's not like I have to find something else. Instead, here's our new bevy of planets. Maybe this time we'll actually be able to see some of these from the surface because there's multiple moons here. And some are higher in the sky than others. But let's go ahead and see. This is one more time. Let's look at our system map to see where we are. We are currently at Alpha Sigma Boo 877, an arid level 3 planet. It doesn't look that arid from up here. Looks like there's a lot of water. But let's go and see what threat level 3 is going to do to me. Is it going to make me sad? Is it going to make me happy? So here we are. We are maybe on sand or sandstone, and you can see right away just the nice dunes in the background. So pretty good. I may need to set up a shelter here of some kind. But for now, we're going to get a campfire. Let's get our furnace next to here. I have an additional bed that we'll just put right on the spawn point, which used to actually, according to one of the de developers in the stream last night, used to cause significant bugs if you did that. You'd get stuck forever. And uh, let's put an anvil here. So this is kind of going to be our crafting side, yarn spinner. So yeah, I'll build a house to put some of these in eventually. Maybe this planet, maybe the next one. But for now, I think the first thing to do, the most prudent thing, is just to explore. So let's start by going right. This is not a large planet. Let me reset my view. If you press and hold control, by the way, you can free roam the camera. And also, I figured out N is your hotkey for the query tool. Test bush 2 with nice test flower 8. Dirt dried in the sun. Hard cracked sand that shatters underfoot. And... This guy seems to have nothing to say about himself, so here we go. How is how is my weaponry going to handle this? Because threat level 3 is no joke. Maybe I should go for threat level 2, but I think I can handle it just based on the monsters that are here. If my iron bow is doing that much damage already, my armor penetration may be pretty good. Okay, so there's some happy little planetary dissidents that are, oh my god, they're shooting bubbles at me and jumping really hard. Wow, that was like half my health bar. So we're back to the danger zone here of I don't know what's friendly and what's not. That's kind of the first getting to know you portion of this level. And because it's arid, I don't have as much in the way of trees so far. And those guys are trying to attack me too. They look a little stuck. So we'll just let them go up here. At least my iron hammer is going to be good enough. So I gotta think about that uh, ship and just wonder. Maybe I do need iron gear for it. Those are cute little eyeball creatures. And we do have some sand down here, but I kind of want to just explore the surface for now, at least for probably the remainder of this video. Because it's just a new world. I want to see if there's anybody else here. I want to kind of see what the nighttime looks like as well. Those those guys look so friendly, yet they are so terrifying. Ranged attacks in this game are so hard to deal with. Which is why it's great when I can do a ranged attack. Maybe. 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 So it's level 4 creatures on the surface, which means our nighttime is going to be no joke. And I wouldn't expect anything less from here. So I probably do need to start paying attention to the copper that I get as well. And I probably could... Uh, okay, so there's some more copper to mine over there too. Is this sand all going to fall under me though is one important question. No. So I do need to be farming copper. I have more than enough iron. I actually have more than enough of all the other resources. It's just going to be copper at this stage of the game. So what I'm, what my plan here is just to explore this planet, try and get enough pixels to upgrade my armor, because apparently I'm going to need uh, level 5 armor to at least eat a hit in case the spaceship tries to crush me. And then when I summon the distress beacon somewhere, I'm going to have to go back and... I may have to do it multiple times. I may, have to, I may go ahead and make multiple distress beacons if I can. That's probably smart. Right now, this one looks like, let's see here, there's more iron on the surface, which is not too terrible, but like I said, I just want to get a little bit of a lay of the land, and without trees, there's only so much to say here, so we're gonna, oh, that's right, you can't actually do that, but I can jump up here, I don't have a double jump or anything, but, yeah, arid means what you think it means, kind of think of Colorado a little bit back here. At least southern Colorado, where it's more of a desert. 
Okay, so those eyeball things don't look like they're trying to attack me. However, that guy's going to try and attack me. So let's go ahead and just drop a torch. So that managed to aggro him, so that's cute. But I can mostly take him out with a well-placed bow shot. Fortunately, uh, let's see, do we have uh, any quick ore down here? I just kind of want to get a sense of what I'm going for, or what I'm going to be going through. Good, this is a good pit. I'm going to torch it just to mark it. And I'll put another little marker kind of out up here. Okay, of course, after I deal with this guy. And I'm getting used to the key bindings, and more like I said, I have a lot of terraria muscle memory. So we'll just drop a torch right here. That's going to be my signal when I'm going through day and night that this is a good cave. It shows potential. There's a lot of places to kind of go down. But right now, I'm going to deal with some of this copper a little bit later. I kind of want to see, since this is a small world, and I'm going to need to get some coal too. So if stuff's kind of on the way like this, I'm going to grab it. But if I have to dig a few places like that copper over there, I'm just going to do it later. Like I said, I just kind of want to see, is there an, are there people here or am I... Once again, all alone. Oh my god, if those guys try and attack me, I'll be so sad. Good, they don't. Okay. So, we're, one other nice thing, though, is that we're starting to see some of these treasure chests right on the surface. And I am a little curious about kind of how the whole lay of the land is going to go here. Because on the old planet, the forest one that I had before that I started out with on default, felt like as nice as that village was, like over half of my landscape was just overtaken by that village so there is there was a lot of places that maybe I could be able to mine that I wasn't going to good we have trees at least a few trees so pretty solemn simple music time here and I'm a little disappointed about that spaceship fight but I guess it is going to be like Terraria and I'm just going to have to make some kind of arena just to take it out, which is okay now that I know the Distress Beacon has to be put upstairs. I gotta actually build something. Maybe it's a little higher up. Maybe not fighting them in my farm, but maybe a flat surface will be okay if I can dodge all kinds of stuff. There's a lot of coal. That's good. What do we got down here? Dirt. Derp, derp. Lots of water here. And lots of water here, not too much else. Okay, yeah, yellow flashlight. That was my big get from a treasure chest. Ah, you, you would have loved to have seen the disappointment in that video, maybe. But that's kind of part of the trade-off with doing a substantial farming amount of time off-camera is that there was really no challenge for me. It was just literally looking as hard as I could for copper. And I did not do a terribly good job of finding it. But in order to build the uh, Distress Beacon, I'm going to need 60 copper. Or 60 copper ore to make 30 copper bars. So that's that's a good goal to have. And I do, it does, at least this planet does look like there's a, a lot of caves that I'll be able to explore and possibly find some copper there. So that's good news. And we'll see if I can go all the way around the world just as quickly because this is... A smaller planet or technically this is a moon and okay now we're now we're heading down into a valley here and I like the sort of background change just a little bit to more monuments or more rocky places here so those are not sand dunes in the background not that I thought they were I thought they were more sandstoneish mountains the kind that would erode away if this were a different kind of planet because obviously I've been to all kinds of planets and know all kinds of things but yeah, one other thing that I do really like about this game, and if you did pre-order, you got this as well, is the soundtrack. Just even something like this is just, you're mining, it's relaxing, it's good to just zen out a little bit. Until, of course, you have these screwballs. But there we go, one down. Just trying to get as much meat as I can. There's no XP to be had. Of course, there is... Okay, Bubble Blast, that's no good. That's that's kind of like some Pokemon that I don't know as well. Um, I guess the bigger issue is that I probably shouldn't be farming meat at this point. I have a lot of meat, which is a, a great thing to say out of context. What I need is pixels, so let me actually see. If I can kill you friendly guys for pixels, that'd be good. 
I'm kind of curious about nighttime, what that's going to do here. If I'll get thunderstorms at night. And oh my goodness, that was a huge drop for kind of a big mouth faced. And this is interesting because I'm actually below the ground level now, so there's not a lot of ambient light, or at least there's not as much. So this is actually a little scary. As we still get the very soft piano. And just with so many, and I mean, the music really does ramp up a lot of different directions. I mean, you've heard it cue in when you get in the combat, but in a kind of day and age where everything is really trying to grab people's attention all at once, I would almost characterize the uh, composing choices by Chucklefish for this game as kind of brave in a way, because it's it's very counter what you see in games like, yeah, it's action, da -na 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 so it's good to see that there is still a place in the modern landscape for, and this is going to be another place that I torch. And I'm just torching these to remember them for later on. If I can actually get out of here. That would be, that'd be helpful if I could get out of here. But yeah, it's, it's kind of brave in a way. Just because it's the game's music, the tone, the ambiance lets you kind of play yourself. And I think that's a strong suit of something like Minecraft as well, that just really lets you go. Terraria is a little bit more action-y with its music. It fits, don't get me wrong, and I don't mind it at all. And I know I'm drawing the comparisons to games that I've gotten some ire from people for making those kind of comparisons, but I mean, they were developed all around the same era of gaming, which this we're still in the same era of gaming, even though it's 2000. 13 or whenever this is being made but yeah let's see here you are not friendly you are definitely not friendly and now you are squished I'm still not seeing a lot here on the surface but I probably am through here and this is this is interesting as well because we're on a planet that the it's arid but it looks like there's very much more extremes in the uh, altitudes here between up and down between where we start where we finish and I think that's fitting because if you're on something like a forest planet you're gonna have weather systems that will uh, shape the land a little bit more and erode things over time and that is a florin there is a florin on this place can I interact with you florin wonder florin miss cocoon kin interesting some funny looking person okay that must be a default thing because that is you're a funny looking person and cool there's a hut it's a florin hut. I can sleep in your florin bed, which is probably really good because I did not realize I was just about to die. But I think this is an appropriate place to stop this video at this point, where my florin friend has saved me from certain death, and I don't think there were any environmental factors that were killing me. I think I had just lost that much health, which would have been a pretty nasty surprise. So this is Way to Fail with Starbound, and we are going to be exploring a new planet next episode, trying to gather more resources. Specifically more pixels, that's the number one resource I need. Just to see if we can take on that boss that literally crushed me in like five seconds. So, hope you enjoyed it. Sorry if you were hoping for this to be a kill video, but that is not to be. But, yeah, if you liked what you saw, feel free to subscribe, or at least comment, or plus one, or like the video. Those all really help me in terms of uh, just getting feedback, getting especially advice and tips on what to do in the game, and I, I'm happy to give back. But that's it for now. I will see you all next time.